All right, so how exactly did the war in the Pacific, World War II in the Pacific, kind of start for MacArthur specifically, right? So we're going to get a little bit into the, um, looks like context first. So basically we're starting at about at Pearl Harbor. Um, so the first American commander in the Philippines to learn of the disaster, meaning Pearl Harbor, uh, was Admiral Hart. Admiral Husband E. Kimmel in Honolulu radioed him the same message he was sending to Washington and to all warships at sea, air raid on Pearl Harbor. This is no drill. Um, it was characteristic of, rela of relations between the services that Hart neglected to share this vital information with MacArthur or any other army officer. All right, and this is also like, keep in mind, this wasn't just one way. So like to say later, um, similarly, MacArthur later neglected to inform the Navy that he intended to evacuate Manila on Christmas Eve. Um, and this is later into uh, we'll say the retreat that basically started the Pacific Theater, right? Um, so there's that. Um, basically, pretty much no one knew what was going on at first. Um, I believe even some planes thought that it was basically just an exercise to see like if they were um, ready to go more or less. The ones at least that were already up, they actually didn't even believe that, you know, they were being attacked. Um, and this is in the Philippines, not in Pearl Harbor. I should preface that with, um, for example, like talking about Clark Field and that stuff first. So to continue on, um, yeah, here it is. So uh, the Japanese naval flyers had veered off and the American pilots discovering that this had been a false alarm lost their combat edge. Some of them even thought that Pearl Harbor had been a hoax intended to test their readiness. Um, this, again, these are American pilots flying around in the Philippines um, on this day, um, you know, December 7th, 1941. Um, so there's that. Uh, the P-40s came down and B-17s stayed up, basically keeping them off of the airfields. Um, Besides the P-40s, which is not great, um, that we'll learn later. I have a, um, this is a bit of a side note, but I found the diary of a uh, major, I forgot his first name, Dooley, who was General uh, Jonathan, I think, Wainwright's um, aide um, in the Philippines, which I haven't really gone too much into yet, but we'll get into that later whenever I... Um, finish through all that stuff too. But anyways, so um, the Air General called back 10 minutes later asking permission to, um, and this is the Air General being uh, Sutherland, I think. No, phony. Brereton was the general at this time. Um, sorry. So the general called back 10 minutes later asking permission to arm his bomb base, Sutherland, who I believe was actually MacArthur's chief of staff, off the top of my head. Um, uh, Sutherland later denied receiving this request, but at 9 a.m., uh, but a 9 a.m. entry in the airman's log notes that in response to query from General Brereton, he, uh, he had received a message from General Sutherland advising planes not authorized to carry bombs at this time. Um, it was now six hours after Pearl Harbor, MacArthur's luck was holding, though his inactively or sorry inactivity was more and more baffling at 9 25 brereton learned that carrier-based japanese planes had bombed tarlac uh i have no idea how to pronounce that um tuga gario something like that i don't know um and camp john hay in northern luzon Surely he thought the general now would have had his overact, right? Because basically um, one of the big things that FDR had for um, MacArthur in the Philippines was like, you cannot at like blatantly attack uh, the Japanese until like you have an overt act of what they're, they're coming after you too, right? Um, one of those and phoning Sutherland, he pointed out, 
if Clark Field is attacked, we won't be able to operate on it. It was, he said, absolutely essential that the pilots parry the coming blow. The chief of staff rejected this request, too. Um, basically, and then later on, he gave permission for, like, a photo reconnaissance mission um, to try to take some photos of Japanese air bases and so on later in the afternoon. And then the general, again, denied that this conversation ever took place. Um, and then MacArthur later on basically said, you know, like, you can attack after those photos develop. Um, but again, lots of confusion in the start, to say the least. And so it was kind of, seemed to be more or less of a, I want to say a reoccurring theme, at least in the start. Um, it was very confusing. A lot of things um, may or may not have happened, depending on who you talk to sort of thing. Um, and so basically, you know, it was very, I forget, I don't, have it highlighted in here but I'm I believe at some point they may have come as like you know the blitzkrieg that happened over in the European theater basically the Japanese did the same thing but they did it like everywhere um in the Pacific where they attack attack basically like Hawaii and the Philippines and all those islands at pretty much the same time at least at the start of the war it was like you know it was what they said something along the lines of like the blitzkrieg was created in Germany but was perfected in the Pacific. So, something like that. Um, along those lines, at least. Um, with that being said, the very, that uh, turned into basically like this kind of leapfrog uh, retreat to Corregidor in the Philippines and stuff. Um, that we get to pretty much um, remember so much about with Corregidor and Bataan for MacArthur's time in the Philippines, right? At least in the beginning of the war. So there's that. Um, more, again, for these, um, especially the first videos, I'm really trying to be kind of, not superfluous, but like really go kind of like bird's eye view, big uh, main things. And if you guys want me to go more in depth on specific videos, I'll kind of, I'll do that. Uh, later just let me know in the comments and such um, or specific things it's also like as I find sources and so on um, so there's that um, regardless so to take another quote this is later on um, so when it came to fighting this is a statement kind of about MacArthur in general so when it came to fighting Mac MacArthur's defense was the one credible episode of the whole first five months wow of the five first months of the war in the pacific the battle of luzon stands out like a beacon of hope in comparison with the incredible debacle uh, at singapore the easy fall of the dutch east indies and the confusion in washington no wonder macarthur proudly named his airplane baton and that was later on that we'll get into um but yeah, bait like was kind of alluding to a, a second ago, it's like you know, especially in the very beginning, it was very um. We got kind of ran over for a hot minute, especially in the Pacific, where it was not um, Washington's primary goal. I guess we'll say for uh, they weren't. It's not that they weren't concerned. It's that we weren't a main. Uh, the Pacific wasn't a main focus um, for the vast majority of the war until like the very end it really to say like you know um to basically you know complete the war in germany was the first priority was hands down uh correct i guess um uh, so there's that um Right. So basically, we kind of know the story, um, at least in the beginning, with, you know, pretty much MacArthur had his armies and stuff, and they would um, retreated into Corregidor and Bataan, um, the Bataan Peninsula, and pretty much just kind of held out there for as long as they could. 
Um, it's very much like a war of attrition at that point to where no one, I mean, they couldn't really get like any supplies. Um, they're pretty much surrounded for ev from every direction. And pretty much um, to take a quote, um, it was at this point that MacArthur decided that he must die. There seemed to be no other way out. So, um, and this was, he had some, he had an, like an opportunity to get out and I'll, we'll explain more on this in a minute. Um, so like basically he, he wasn't going to, he decided not to take it, that he wasn't going to go, um, until, and basically he wanted his wife and son to leave first and his wife plain out refused. Um, and this basically, uh, led to, um, here it is. I did, I did highlight this part. And so to directly, or to take a quote then, um, when he told Jean, his wife, um, basically, you know, leave with, uh, the Cusans, basically the Philippine presidents at that time, um, uh, Jean didn't even discuss the question with her husband. She said, we have drunk from the same cup. Uh, she told Mrs. Cuzon, uh, we three shall stay together. Then she scribbled a note to the general explaining her decision. Uh, Sergeant Adversario carried it into the tunnel, because they were all in air raid tunnels basically at this point. Uh, MacArthur came out and talked to her about it. The others who had withdrawn to leave them alone noticed that he was speaking earnestly and she kept shaking her head. Then he later, then he returned to his lateral and radioed Marshall that his little family preferred to remain on the island and share the rigors of war with me. To an aide, he said, Jean is my fi finest soldier. Another aide hesitated and then asked about Arthur's fate. The general said crisply, he is a soldier's son. This is pretty much how that went. Um, but basically all resigned to live it out on uh baton and so on themselves right however we know and i've already posted some stuff about this um but you know that's not how things really shook out because basically um it ended up that i mean macarthur was such a PR like figurehead in the United States at this time if that makes sense that pretty much FDR realized that you know if they lost MacArthur or if he was captured it would be dramatic to kind of like American morale um and so it ended up the only thing that was able to make MacArthur uh leave the Philippines and leave his soldiers from basically as we found out later from the baton death march and so on that was pretty much a direct order from the president himself was pretty much the only thing that would get uh macarthur off that island and yeah he got a lot of flack from that obviously kind of hence the name of the or the title of this video um he was deemed as a coward by a lot of people um, especially um, the Axis powers and the Axis generals when they found out that's how they described them because, you know, uh, propaganda is a, a major thing in any war and whatever it takes. With that being said, there is that I accidentally skipped over a, t a copy of a telegram to Washington that MacArthur wrote during this time. So basically describing the precarious position on Luzon. Um, where he was. So basically he told Washington, uh, since I have no air or sea protection, you must be prepared at any time to figure on the complete destruction of this command. You must determine whether the mission of delay would be better furthered by the temporizing plan of Cusan or by my continued battle effort, which was basically the temporizing plan of Cusan was pretty much to make the Philippines like uh, give them independence so they could be like deemed a neutral state and kind of like save the country in a way, um, at least from not necessarily occupation, but from there, there's a difference sometimes. Um, 
I think just like maybe even if it's just legal and not necessarily in how things actually go, but like in uh, the difference between occupation of like a neutral country and a belligerent country, uh, we'll say the people are treated differently, but um, especially from uh, what we learned of how the Japanese treated um, the people that they took over, um, occupied we'll say, um, don't know how big of a difference that actually would have been. It's pretty horrific regardless. But anyways, to continue on with the telegram, uh, the temper of the Filipinos is one of violent resentment against the United States, basically because they kept fighting. Um, every one of them expected help, and they believe they have been betrayed in favor of others. So far as the military angle is concerned, the problem presents itself as to whether the plan of President Kuzan might offer the best possible solution of what is about to be a disastrous debacle. It would not affect the ultimate situation in the Philippines, for that would be determined by the results in other theaters. How we talked about how the Philippines and the Pacific was not a priority of the United States at the time, and it really was uh, opening a second front in uh, Europe. So, to continue, if the Japanese government rejects President Kusan's proposition, it would psychologically strengthen our hold because of the Prime Minister's public statement offering independence. If it accepts it, we lose no military advantage because we would still secure at least equal delay. Please, please advise me. So pretty much this whole time was just MacArthur trying to delay until, you know, he could eventually get help and that sort of thing. So later on, um, this is this is a something to do with Secretary Stimson, Roosevelt, and Marshall as they were talking in the Oval Office. Uh, they found that they were in complete accord. So the central problem here was normal. Stimson wrote, "It was a part. Excuse me. It was a part of the necessary tragedy of war that this moral issue." must be met by a command to other men to die. The Philippines, they agreed, was a possession of the United States. Yielding to Kuzan at this point would be like the French giving up Indochina, the Dutch parting with Indonesia, and the British freeing Burma and India. Basically, they said no, more or less. Um, so there's that. That's pretty much all I'm going to do about this time period, which is pretty much for the years 1941 to 42, really kind of like the beginning and initial retreat of the Pacific Theater to basically, you know, uh, MacArthur went all the way to Australia by PT boats and so on, which I kind of explained in some of the community posts that I've done the past couple weeks uh, on how specifically that went, but since this one's already gone this long, I'm probably just going to leave that for a further video and so on. But so pretty much uh, logistic stuff. All of this right now is coming from a book called American Caesar by William Manchester, one of uh, MacArthur's biographers. There's the cover so on. It's a pretty beefy boy. So not doing... Um, Kind of tearing it apart a little bit but not going so in depth on things this playlist for one isn't going to be just just this book um i'm gonna find other sources and things as well i've been kind of browsing like the national archives and stuff and looking at that whenever i have time but anyways i'm gonna leave this one here um if you guys want more specifics on certain things or whatever um just let me know i'm pretty open um that's what comment sections are for uh, with that being said, I'm going to leave this one here, and you can find the next ones up in the top right corner as per usual. So, see you there.